So I'm going to show you a quick demo using the new NRF 54L. Um, we've got one of those uh, dev kits over here um, alongside a phone running um, or logged into the Bleacon um, console. So the first thing we're going to do is get the modem um, programmed up onto the NRF um, 54. So to do that, uh, you just go to the developer uh, website of Bleacon and you'll see now that there's a release for the NRF 54L uh, 15DK. So you can just uh, download that image and then um, using um, uh, NCS um, program that into the device. So let me load up that file. Um, I'll select the DK and what I'll do is I'll erase that and uh, write it. So um, you can see that's programming away. It's just finished in fact. Okay, so um, we've just programmed that device um, as a bleak and modem, the um, 54L uh, chip on there. Um, so let's see if that's working. So on the phone, I'm logged into um, the bleak and uh, console web app, um, but I can actually use uh, bleak and to um, scan the identity of this uh, new device. So let's do that. So let's use the scanner. So that's invoking the Bleacon um, scanner. And if I uh, just press button zero, you can see um, what's happened there is um, we've actually extracted, you can't probably see the number there, but we've actually extracted the uh, unique identity of that uh, Bleacon device we just created. So every Bleacon uh, device, when you um, boot the firmware for the first time, will create a new secure identity, public private key pair um, and identity. And of course that can be scanned over the radio and we use Bleacon to um, allow this web app just to be able to um, go and scan the nearby uh, Bleacon device identity. So what I'm going to do just um, for later is I'm going to register that device with this uh, test network. So now that device is actually um, registered onto a network. Okay, so if we go back to, um, let's say, a console, um, uh, we're also connected to this modem over the USB uh, port using um, a UART connection um, uh, via J-Link. So uh, we can talk to this modem over the UART like you would if you um, had it connected to a host uh, microcontroller. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, uh, perhaps uh, try and get its identity. So here we go. The same identity we scanned, um, we've returned by talking to the modem over its uh, UART interface. Um, this uh, TTY USB modem is how uh, the Mac has enumerated the J-Link um, USB um, UART and the get identity command is just uh, you, uh, using the CLI to um, get the modem's identity. Um, but I could do some other things. I can, for example, um, do a ping. So what's happening there is the modem is uh, requesting connection uh, from the Bleacon network using any hotspot that happens to be nearby um, and it gets access to the network. If it does get access to the network, it pings our back end and here you go. So in this case, it took quite, you know, two and a half seconds to find a hotspot that was willing to service the request um, and then um, did a, a full ping. Um, but we can do some other things. So for example, let's get the time. Um, so here you can see this is the actual time that the uh, NRF 54L um, real-time clock is set at. And that was set by the Bleacon network and will be updated um, uh, regularly. And that's really exciting because not only has the device um, now got a unique and secure identity, um, but also it knows the global time. So it can timestamp things locally uh, for later synchronization back to the cloud. And of course, any data that's synced to the cloud um, will be uh, uh, coherent with any other data from any other devices because they all have a shared um, view of global time. Um, and then let's try uh, one more thing. I'm actually going to do a request. I'm just going to send um, some random uh, binary. So it's waiting for a connection. Um, it got connection in this sense uh, very quickly. Um, the connection was then uh, terminated once the request happened and we didn't get any response. Um, well, that's probably not really a surprise because we've connected it to a network, but I, this is a blank network that I haven't set anything up. So if I go over to 
um, the console, this time on my laptop, just um, so you can see things better. Um, let's just have a look what's been going on here. Well, you can see, um, as you'd expect, this device with this uh, di identity that we've seen both from Bluetooth scanning and from the modem UART was registered. So I did that using the phone. And then a request came in, um, which was the request I just sent. Um, and it said network routing failed. Well, that's because we haven't set up any route for these uh, commands to um, go to yet. Um, yeah, so exactly like what we would have expected. Uh, one more nice trick, if I actually have a look in this event, um, I can also uh, see that um, the device knows its location. So if I just put that into Google, there you go. So the device um, also uh, knows its location in the world um, and the service does as well. So just by putting that firmware on the 54L, you now have a device with a, a secure identity um, that knows the time, uh, that knows its location um, and can communicate with a cloud backend over Bluetooth low energy. So as you saw, that's all available on our website. Um, once you get hold of a 54L um, dev kit, um, have a go and um, talk to us if you've got any more questions.